Yo, 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 it's me, the Jimbo, here to tell you that there were some Easter eggs we missed for Batman and Harley Quinn. That's right, we are in fact not all-knowing. <laughs> Who'd have thunk? <laughs> Remember how there were like over 140 of them last time? Well, there's not nearly as many this time. What's that? You don't care about more Easter eggs? You you just want the timeline video? Jeez, people, I said it a couple videos ago, I said it on the podcast, I said it in like a dozen comment responses. We've been waiting until the tie-in comics finished coming out. There was a prequel comic that started in July, and a sequel comic that started in October. The sequel wrapped up a couple weeks ago, but the prequel just finally finished coming out the other day. It was supposed to wrap up months ago, but the final issue kept getting postponed week after week after week. We were starting to think it would never come out, but it's here and I'm glad we waited because it has a freaking one year later later moment in it, <clears throat> but that's not what this video is about. This video is about overlooked Easter eggs, so ready to dive in because <laughs> you don't really have a choice. All right, let's head back to the beginning of the film and start with this one so that we can get it out of the way. A lot of people felt the need to tell me, that's Laura Mipsum text, dude. Hey man, that's Laura Mipsum. Laura Mipsum, bro. Laura Mipsum. That's Laura that Mipsum. Text is Laura yeah, Mipsum. but that Laura Mipsum though. I know, okay? I'm a filmmaker. I make movies all the time. That's what I do. I know what Laura Mipsum is. That's the first thing I figured it was, so I gave it a good old googs and I didn't find any version of Laura Mipsum that is exactly what the movie has laid out. Maybe it's Laura Mipsum and I'm just a moron. Maybe it's like not though. I don't know. Now this part of the video is over. Cue the annoying egg baby sound that you all hate. I'm gonna go ahead and give credit where credit is due here for these missed Easter eggs. This one was sent in by Anthony Shepers who suggests the name Super Babes may be influenced by the RPG of the same name. No, not that kind of RPG. No, that's RGB. That's RDJ. RNB. Who the hell is editing this anyway? Wait, it's me. Why am I doing this? This isn't even that funny. The Super Babes RPG was based on characters from AC Comics' Femforce title, one of the first all-female superhero teams in comic books. Of course, the characters in this game were all overly busty, scantily clad superwomen, so the name certainly fits. I looked up the game to figure out how it's played, but honestly, I don't have the time to explain it to you, so just Google Super Babes RPG if you... If you want to know more. <laughs> These couple of peeps have pointed out that the wall art inside the restaurant, despite being weirdly inaccurate, damn it, I hate that Hal Jordan one so much, they're based directly on 1970s DC Comics merchandise, like these exact poses and costumes and everything. So that's cool. They still look really out of place in the DCAU, but then so do like 20 other things in this movie, but I mean, who's counting? <laughs> we pointed out before that this guy Harley passes on the street appeared in the Batman episode Harley and Ivy, but according to the user The Random Bats, and accurately so, he also appears in Christmas with the Joker, this time serving a much more wholesome purpose. Hey lady, hold up! You dropped this package a couple blocks back! Oh, it's for my grandson! Thanks so much! Merry Christmas! Now can we go home? Ah oh, man, that reminds me. I really gotta get my last few Christmas gifts. If only I had money. Next, we return to this scene where Nightwing berates Batman for being Mr. Grumpy Gills about the whole Harley tickle fight thing. Last time I placed on screen several super villainesses that Batman made the bat moves on in his time but failed to include Cheetah. Thanks, Amman, Amun. I'm sorry, I really suck at that. You'd think someone who can't pronounce anyone's name shouldn't be regularly hosting YouTube videos in which he has to say someone's name, but here we are! <laughs> Heading over to the henchman bar, there were a handful I couldn't identify before. First off, I now realize that this guy is Muggsy of the duo Muggsy and Rhino. It threw me off that Rhino's just walking around without Muggsy since the pair are usually inseparable, but I'm like 99% sure that's him. The cheekbones, the hair, the hat, it all adds up. And let me just remind everyone that I found that one. Me. I didn't need anyone else's help. Not not like in the case of this blonde girl here who we saw in Two-Face Part 1. Thanks, X6 Silent Treatment, X6. Wait, Silent Treatment? Silent Treatment? Cylon Treatment? Sounds painful. And this redhead chick here is, I guess, supposed to be based on a character from the 60s Batman show, Molly, according to these fine human beings. This next one, I honestly can't believe I missed. Dishonor on me, dishonor on my cow. These commenters kindly point out that when Batman gets the call from Booster Gold in the Batmobile, the frickin' ringtone is the Justice League Unlimited theme song. Here, listen. I don't know what to say. I'm a musician. How did I miss this? This is like, oh my god. Well, that's cool. Isn't that cool? Good job, movie. 
Good job. And finally, we come to the post credit scene. Here, Harley has established herself as a talk show host, but makes a jokey reference to herself by saying, I'm a regular Dr. Quinn medicine person, ain't I? Unbeknownst to little baby James over here, Dr. Quinn medicine woman was a TV show that ran from 1993 to 1998, starring Jane Seymour, who also played Genevieve Teague on Smallville. Thanks, Seaside Detective 2. Do, uh, do you live in Seaside, Oregon? Because I grew up in Astoria. I really need to know this answer now. Also, same scene, our pal Jordan reminds me that Harleen Quinzel was actually a talk show psychiatrist in the The Batman cartoon prior to becoming Harley Quinn in that universe. I don't know if this scene is a direct reference to that or just coincidence, but her debut episode on that cartoon was written by Paul Dini, and then the Batman and Harley Quinn movie was... Oh, wait, that's right. Paul Dini had nothing to do with this movie. That's why it's so awful. One last thing people have been pointing out to us as an Easter egg is the fact that Swamp Thing has an almost identical face design to Old Man Wayne on Batman Beyond. I mean, I guess? But everyone's stupid face in this art style looks pretty much the same. Do I look like Batman to you? Actually, you kinda do. Especially when you're all scally like that. Swamp Thing just looks like Swamp Thing. Except this Swamp Thing looking guy from Comfort and Joy now doesn't really look like him. Is this not him anymore? Was it ever? Ah oh boy, back to the drawing board. Did you hear that? It's the distant giddy cries of excited legacies of the DCAU fans hearing me say I was going to draw. Keep your pants on, people. The new issue's coming soonish. Let me have my Christmas. I'm sure there's more Easter eggs we missed, but there you go. This brings our total number to... <laughs> That's more than last time. Interesting. Thanks for watching as always. Be sure to follow us on social media at DCAU Watchtower and check out our Patreon reward tiers if you got a moment. Some pretty cool stuff you can sign up for, like day early access to our videos, custom artwork from yours truly, or even live stream hangouts with me and Ted, producers of the Legacies webcomic and the videos you see here on this channel. We're a slowly but surely growing team of hardworking nerds, and any help you want to throw away in the process is totally fine by me. And if you enjoy our videos in general, share them with your friends. I'm sure you have some people on Facebook or something who would also like to hear a bunch of geeks talk about geek stuff. Any spreading of these videos really helps the channel out and allows us to keep creating more and more coolio superhero stuff. Until next time, I'm James Strecker and you're watching the Disney Chat, the Watchtower Database.